Um, all right, so today I'm going to be talking about feline asthma. <clears throat> so what it is, this is basically like our asthma, it's just a constriction of the airways that's usually caused when the cat's <coughs> immune system overreacts to an allergen. And it can result in a lot of reactions that cause a narrowing of the airway that causes breathing difficulty, also known as dyspnea. And in the photo, this is, it's, as you can see, it's a lot thinner and it's a lot narrower than the normal one up there, which is the case it is. So some of the risk factors in feline asthma is some of the common allergen agents that can cause it are dust, <coughs> kitty litter, pollen, mold, dust mites, and even some of their foods, some types of foods can also cause these things. Um, it's most common between two and eight years of age in cats. However, it can occur at any age. <coughs> and based on what I found, females might have a slightly higher chance of getting it than males. And for whatever reason, they haven't determined why yet, but Siamese cats have a high chance of getting it. And overweight and obese cats are more likely to just get any respiratory issues. And outdoor cats are more likely than indoor cats because outdoor they might be closer to like the common allergens that are outdoor versus indoors they might be a bit more protected from everything. So some of the symptoms are coughing, which is a big one because there are very few illnesses in cats that actually have coughing as a main cause of them. So if you see that, you can kind of be like, okay, well it might be asthma. Also just difficulty breathing, shortness of breath, open mouth breathing. And as you can see in the photos down there, there they kind of go into this hunched position or they're in the squatting position when they're coughing up and getting into, and their neck's kind of extended when they get an asthma attack or something. And if you listen closely, you can normally hear like a wheezing sound as they exhale, which is another teller. So based on the website I found, there is like a kind of rating on how bad the asthma attacks are. So mild is the symptoms will occur intermittently, not daily, and it doesn't really interfere with their life. <coughs> um, moderate, it's not occurring daily, but when it does occur, it's much more severe, so it can um, interfere with the cat's lifestyle throughout the house and everything. In the severe form, debilitating <coughs> symptoms will occur daily, so they'll be getting these problems every day. And life-threatening is potentially lethal dyspnea and oxygen deprivation because they can't inhale, exhale very well. And this is where you're going to have the big problems, where you need to get something happening quick. <clears throat> the diagnosis that they will use generally is, we'll start with like a physical exam where they'll just kind of pinpoint where the wheezing's occurring with a stethoscope or something. And then they'll perform a blood test in which they look for a large amount of eosinophils, which are associated with an allergic response, which will kind of point towards it. They will also, they might look at an x-ray to look for what is known as air trapping in the lungs, where you get overinflation of the lungs resulting from their inability to exhale, which is kind of like, in the photo, it kind of, you can see it's kind of like um, inflamed down in the lower airways there. And that's kind of what they'll see in the x-ray. They'll be like, okay, well this might be the cause. And then the fecal exam, is really kind of performed to rule out the presence of something called a lung worm, which is kind of a worm that'll cause symptoms similar to asthma, but it may not actually, but it's not actually asthma, so they have to decide which one it is. They might perform a bronchoscopy, which pretty much allows the vet to look down their airways of the cat and take samples of the mucus lining obtained with a small cytology brush, and then they can run that under a microscope and kind of figure stuff out there. Then they could also do a tracheal lavage where they put a small amount of sterile saline solution down the wind into the airway and then they retrieve it out so they can kind of figure stuff out that way as well. The treatment, uh, just like as asthma, is not really treatable but it is manageable so you can manage it to make it less bad. It kind of depends on the severity of the condition on what you can do. One of the big things is just kind of get the cat to avoid anything that triggers a breathing issue. So if, maybe if it, had, if it was an outdoor cat, but it was like allergic to pollen or something, you may want to keep it indoors if you have that option or something. 
Um, you can give them corticosteroids, which will reduce bronchial inflammation, and then combine that with bronchodilator, which will open up the airways. And these are both usually taken via an inhaler, but can also be done with tablets or injections. So that's kind of what their inhaler looks like. At the very end that you can't really see very well is the actual like corticosteroid or bronchodilator medicine. And they have to like put that mouthpiece on so that the cat will actually get it into their system. <clears throat> Some of the drugs used for the treatment of this are, like I said, corticosteroids. They use fluticasone propionate or Flovent, which is a name brand, which is in the bottom there, which is basically just kind of an inhaler kind of thing. And then they can also use the bronchodilators, albuterol, which will be proventil or ventolin. When I put it, it's the proventil is also kind of that, so you just kind of give them both with the inhaler contraction in the previous slide. And they're usually put as inhalants because inhalants are a bit more beneficial because a higher level of the drugs can actually get to the lungs than just circulating. To the site of the problem. To the site of the problem, yeah. Some of the risks of treatment is frequent and extended corticosteroid therapy in cats has been associated with an elevated risk for pancreatitis and diabetes. And kind of both corticosteroids and bronchodilators are kind of inefficient because they circulate the whole system instead of targeting the specific area where the respiratory tissues are involved in asthma. So they might not be as efficient as they could be in that case. <coughs> Okay, and there are two sources, and you're ready for questions. comments or questions? Here we go. I'll let you point to people. The x-ray that you showed where you had an inflammation in the lung, kind of like a balloon where they can't exhale. Mm -hmm. Are there any, any toxicity problems with the buildup of CO2 gas in the lungs? Mm -hmm. I didn't read up on that, but I think there might probably be that case, just because, because they can't exhale it as well. You well, yeah, they, yeah. they couldn't get enough oxygen either. Yeah, I mean, if you can't so it's kind of like... Yeah. <laughs> Other questions, comments? Who's had a cat with asthma? I believe I do. Okay. <laughs> she does this weird like thing where she's perfectly fine and then she'll jump down off the couch and start going and then like that will last probably a minute or so and then she'll get out these weird air bubbles of stuff. Okay, wow. Mm. And why are the Siamese more prone? Any ideas? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. Who knows? I didn't find anything. Yeah, because you know the thing is, everywhere. if you're allergic, it's usually in your genes. You know, mm -hmm. allergies a lot of times run in genes. And she said, Siamese are more prone sometimes to asthma. To so I don't know yeah. what why. Back here. How often do you have to treat Like with that inhaler, that's a good question. How often do you do that? I couldn't actually figure okay. that out completely. I think it's either just a daily thing or, or like as needed. somewhere as needed. Yeah. Maybe when they're if they're having an attack, you would treat them then yeah, as well. Probably. <laughs> the corticosteroid. I I have severe asthma, and it's the, treated the same way as in cats as it is in humans. Um, the corticosteroid is normally daily, and then the bronchodilator is as needed because it's an emergency inhaler. And you can actually use the same for humans as you can for cats. Wow. Okay. <laughs> So like the pro air, I, I have that healer. Okay. <laughs> so, so it's a, a product that goes across a lot of species then it sounds like. Yeah. Other questions, comments?